it's time to get more into detail. And now let me welcome on stage Tobias Kehl, um, digital engineer and product owner at Neoception. And Tobias, I'm pretty excited what you're going to show us with this rack. Stage is yours. Thank you, Oli, for the introduction. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. In the next roughly 40 minutes, we will cover a lot of ground, um, reaching from the origins of Kanban towards the secret sources of the system regarding, uh, regarding hardware and software. And uh, we will also have a look on the project insights here. And I will close with the vision of where Neoception is trying to shift and lift this whole thing into in the future. So without further ado, let's dive right into the presentation and uh, explain a little bit what this digital Kanban or next level Kanban is actually all about. So the idea has really been to completely digitalize Kanban based supply chains in your shop floor, knowing at what station, what rack, what lane, your material, your Kanban ID is, when it was put there, when it was pick, picked there, how long it resided, for example, in a certain lane, and use this real time information, really gain complete transparency of your shop floor to then optimize your processes on top of this. And optimizing processes could mean, for example, um, your milk run routes, uh, could be reducing your buffer size, uh, assisting your workers on the shop floor, a variety of different benefits that I will also explain later in more detail. And the last point I wanted to mention here is that it's a nice project that spans all levels of an industrial IoT project, reaching from the sensor system towards edge connectivity, your edge layer itself, the connectivity towards clouds, uh, cloud infrastructure, and non also the integration into business software like the Nexi platform by Bosch. But before we now further dive into the details, I want you to understand a little bit better where this process comes from, so to say the origins of Kanban. And if we want to talk about the origins of Kanban, we have to talk about Taichi Ono. He was a Japanese engineer in the 1940s roughly, working for Toyota, and he was in charge to improve the manufacturing line. And he's nowadays considered as the father of the Toyota production system, so the father of Kanban, so to speak. And there's a nice little anecdote that goes along with this. I'm not completely sure if that's all true or if there's some magic in the story, but uh, the story sticks and that's what is important here. So it goes that he in the 1940s, roughly after World War II, he flew to the United States to understand the Ford production system to see what he could copy from concepts and bring that back to Japan. But he realized in the US there was a lot of space available, they had no shortage on material supply, there was huge demand and they were just producing on stock, so a push system, so to say. And he also realized that something he could not just copy for Japan, because in Japan there was not much space available, right after World War II there was not much material supply and also the demand was not so high. So he needed to find a better concept. And then this is where probably we crossed the line towards the magic is he visited a supermarket and then he realized the concept that they use to replenish what they, what they consumed is really nice. So only they reproduce what was consumed in the beginning. And this is what he thought is a perfect fit to use this concept and just use it on the shop floor. And because of this nowadays, we also talk about, if we talk about that kind of wrecks, about the supermarket wrecks. So in honor um, to Taichi Ono. One of the famous quotes from him is, him is uh, for example, costs do not exist to be calculated, but costs exist to be reduced. So he was always about waste management. And on top of this theory, then everything that we nowadays know with lean, lean management, lean startup by Eric Ries was all uh, based on his first ideas and how to make this process more efficient. All right, now how does such a process look like? And there's two important points in this graphic. One is that every Kanban cycle has really two stations that are uh, insanely important. That is the sink, the Kanban rack that you can see behind me, so where the material is replenished, and you have the sources. And the sources, they could be different ones, like in-house production, could be a rearrangement or your in-house warehouse, uh, could be also external supply, so you order more material from your external suppliers. Those would be uh, different Kanban cycles, but altogether they have those two stations. And the second really important point here is that you have two kinds of flows, a material flow that usually goes downstream, so coming from the source, reaching a sink, and then refilling the material at that, at that rack. And then you have the information flow that in this picture is labeled Kanban, which is just uh, the Japanese term for cart, because traditionally it have been carts that were transported, and they go upstream, so um, 
up the value chain back to the source and then they trigger a refillment process. Now if we zoom into this rack and really concentrate on the sink, uh, I would like to explain a little bit the problems that we have with the traditional explanation and implementation at those racks to then understand why it makes sense to digitalize this process. And this is also where we now jump a little bit to the rack behind me. Now let's imagine I am a MIG runner. So I would have those cool material boxes here, standard small load carriers, and I have a certain material in here. First of all, I usually know what is in there, and then if I approach the rack so I have to refill it, I would need to know where I place those small load carriers. That means either I know this by heart, or I have to look on the labels. Imagine that would be a plain rack. You can see that it is already attached with sensors and a main controller and so on. So fast forward, our solution is a retrofit solution. But for now, imagine that's a plain shelf, and I want to refill. If the shelf is just as small as that one, that's quite easy. But if the shelf gets insanely big, I it takes me quite a lot of time to look for where to place that kind of box, where to place this kind of material. So it would be nice if I could assist the worker here to find the correct place to put the boxes. Now imagine I just refill. I put it in here. It's probably going to blink in red because I did not scan, so the system does not know what it is. And on the back side, I am now a different person, different role. I'm an assembly line worker. And here I, I play the same game. I would need to know where I have to put, uh, pick my material in that case to assembly whatever I want to assembly. So I would pick my box. And then I have traditionally those nice cards here. Those Kanban cards that we've seen before, right? So I can put the, the empty boxes back on the lane here. And then those cards, they would rather stay right at the rack, or now I would have to transport them up to the source to trigger a refillment process. The problem there is it takes me time to transport those cards. It would also take me time if I leave them here and somebody comes after a while and picks them up, right? Uh, and another problem is that usually those cards, they get lost at some point. So uh, I don't know why or how, but usually if you start with 10 after a short while, you only have eight and then you have six and then you have five. And after a certain while, you don't have enough material in your process anymore. And even if you have a certain part of your process already digitalized, let's say barcode scanners or RFID scanners, you would still rely on the worker to do this intralogistic job. But that shouldn't be his job. His job is assembly things, so he should not be concentrating on intralogistic triggerings. Because if he would have, and that's the implementation case nowadays, most of the time, he improves his own process, what is, he batches those cards, so he collects them until the end of his shift, and then he scans them all together. And what happens is that you don't have an even supply, but you have an uneven supply. At the end of the shift, instantly you have to replenish eight boxes instead of one every hour, for example, right? So this is one of the main problems uh, of the current Kanban implementation. This is also the problem that Bosch approaches with and asks, isn't there an IoT solution that we come up with to retrofit those kind of shelves to really digitalize a complete process and help the workers to concentrate on the work they do best. And this is how the digital camera management system in that case was born. So back to the presentation here. We really came up with a solution that has customized hardware, really addressing those pain points that I was just explaining. Customized software just written for the job of knowing if material goes into the rack or comes out of the rack. And then also the integration into the business world. In that case, that's the next seat platform by Bosch Connected Industry that then takes care of the optimization processes. So really do the triggering of refillment and so on. But now before we have a deep look onto the hardware and software details, let's see how the uh, solution currently looks like implemented at the Bosch facilities. You can see the MIG runner that I was just been playing. And he is assisted by this armrest that now identifies the material. He then knows by the LED strips and the put the light system where to put those boxes. So no need of looking for where to put this. But he gets just the help to know, OK, I have to put it on this lane, for example. And we can update the information in real time that has been the, the correct lane, for example. And even if he puts it to the wrong lane, as you can see here, the system would instantly signal please not in that lane, and uh, he could have time to correct his error and put it on the right lane. So this is already one of the, the USPs that we have here. And even if he leaves it on the wrong lane, we would at least know that it's on the wrong lane. 
The same accounts for the guy I was playing on the backside. So I pick my material and now you can see he does not need to take care about triggering of refillment processes. He picks the box and instantly we know that material was used and we can trigger refillment. There are some additional features like a put bag of residual material if I use just half of it and if you put it back on the backside, we would even be able to detect that. Now some marketing for our Bosch colleagues. They have a really nice and intuitive UI here. So you can have an overview of how many camera control cycles I have and how does the digital twin of my system look like. And then this whole concept really from a business case of view um, a point of view could also be used for surface supermarkets. So using the same kind of technology but not detecting stuff in, in racks but on the surface. And then it goes on with integration on AGVs, so a huge, of, a huge potential that we have here, right? Um, but for now, I think it's fine here with the video. It goes a bit further and it's also available on YouTube, so uh, you can find it searching for stock management on YouTube. Now, what are the, the really addressing value points that I was just explaining? First of all, the automatic booking. I take something out of the shelf where I put something in, we instantly know that something happened, so instant event detection. The second one would be out of this, we get this increased transparency of material flow. Every event, every station, every carrier is detected on its positions, which then allows us to reduce buffer sizes. Because imagine before you had to cope with this loss of cards that you don't need to do now anymore. So you can reduce the buffer sizes and just say, okay, we don't need six uh, common IDs in my cycle, but only five or four are enough. Same accounts for the assistance system that we've seen. So the the failure prevention and the increase of quality if somebody puts material to the right lane. Another really important point here is the reduced manual efforts for inventory. So because at every point in time we know how much material is on the rack, we don't need anybody going around and, and counting boxes because that's instantly done just with a click of a software. Give me a, a, any carrier that is, that is on that lane and we have this instantly available. And the last really nice value point here it's a retrofit solution. So no need of buying new racks and, and having a huge investor, but you just buy the sensor system, you equip the shelves, and you're done uh, with your digital common rack to start off. Okay. Now, as promised, let's have a look into the details of the system, starting with the hardware components, and then also have a look into the secret sources of the software that is quite tricky uh, to detect the events that um, I was just showing. Back to the presentation at that point. So on the right side, we have this RFID system um, that is one of the main and only portfolio sensors that we have actually in that, in that collection. It's an UHF read and write hat, the same one that you can see on the back side of the shelf. And you have this ident control here that allows us from a software point of view to communicate with the RFID sensors. So as, as explained, almost everything in that system is customized besides those two um, RFID sensors that come right out of the portfolio. You also have seen in the video that you could do the same identification with these armrests. That depends a little bit on the process, a little bit on the implementation that you have, if you at the end go with your fixed readers or if you go with your armrests. Then the middle component that you have is this white box and this is the main controller. And on that main controller runs Neoception software that is a little bit like the brain of the supermarket here because it is in charge of controlling the hardware and doing the pattern recognition that I will explain in a second. Another rather standard component is the stack light that could, for example, signal if something goes wrong on the shelf, if a certain lane has um, a difference in material. What that means, I will explain later. But a normal stack light, right, is you have on every machine inside of your processes. And then further to the left, you have your connectivity. So the bus layer, and physically what we're using is a so-called actuator sensor interface on the physical level. It's a really neat concept because they don't have rigid uh, points where you have to attach your sensors to, so it's quite flexible where you attach them, which means if you equip retrofit this shelf, you're not um, stuck with a certain width of your lanes, but it's completely flexible wherever you want to place them, you just place them. On a software level, we don't use uh, AS interface, but we use AS485 in that case for the protocol, all completely customized again for that use case. Then in the middle, what we there have is the so-called sensor bar, and this is where a lot of engineering know-how from Pebble and Fuchs went into. 
This is background suppression sensors in an array, and what we get out of this is zeros and ones at every station where we have a sensor. The, the core part of it is a portfolio product, or is part of a portfolio product of Pepper and Fuchs, and they completely re-engineered this to fit in this sensor bar that we then can use to detect motions. How we ended up with this solution, I will explain in a short time later when we talk about the project insights. Then on the bottom left, what we have is standard mounting to be able to attach everything to the rack. And then in the middle, one of the more innovative components, the so-called lane controller. This is, uh, has been in the beginning a 3D printed part and is really, really nice quality that allows us for um, the connectivity towards the sensor bars and also this little LED strip that you've seen that is the put to light system. We are working on a pick to light system to include as well. But for now, most of the things are enough with this put to light system. Okay. Now, this is all the components standalone. How would they look if you attach them all together? And this is where this animation is going to show you a little bit how we have every component attached to the bus system. The black cable is the power supply, and the yellow cable that is coming now in is the data cable. And on every lane, you have to imagine we need that kind of LED modules, we need that sensor bar and the lane controller that is then allowing us to connect to the sensors and to the LED module. And we are currently able to connect roughly 50 lanes to one main controller that is then connecting to all of the lanes. And you can also see power supply, stack light, so all the components that you need to completely fit your rack. On the main controller, there's the Neoception service running. And this is the, the, the software brain, the software know-how on the edge side that communicates on one side with all the hardware components and then also does the integration into the business layer. Let's have a short look on the components here on my table so you understand a bit more in detail how, how they, the components work together. So I have, explaining, I have been explaining this AS interface. I have this short cable here. So that would be the data cable actually. And the printed uh, lane controllers to have this clamping mechanism as you can see here and the attachment is really easy so it's just clamped to the bus system and you can clamp them wherever you want so that's the part where I explained that it's quite flexible to retrofit the whole shelf and you can also see that really nice little LED strip that is able to blink in different colors different frequencies so depending a little bit on the use case that you have and then what we also have here is the sensor bar. I will show this later a little bit more into detail. And on the background, you can also see that we attach this main controller and the stack light. And from there come the cabling and they go through all of the lanes to completely digitalize this rack. All right. Now let's have a look into the software details, right? And the software details uh, are, it's quite a lot of know-how that also went in this customized software here. Uh, first of all, that we, have the, the lower tiles on that middle layer that are in control of all the hardware. So controls of RFID software, also if it's arm wrists, our controller does the communication with the arm wrist software. We have the LED controls, we have uh, the sensor data aggregation, so knowing from every uh, component on the bus what kind of information we get. And then one of the, the really important parts is that pattern recognition tile that you see. This is the the, the algorithm to get out of the sensor pattern that we get if something is happening on the bus, what is happening on the bus, is that something that is of, of value for us? So should we inform the upper system about this or should we ignore it? And then on the upper level of the tiles, what you have is the condition monitoring. So meaning are all components connected correctly? Are they running correctly? Do they have any issues? And if they do, we could signal with the stack light. We have one process called mapping and logging. So the logging is clear on the PC itself. If you connect, you can see all the logs, what has been happening on the software. And the mapping may be uh, explained in one second. So on the bus, the bus system itself does not know where it is. If you have a layout of the shelf, you would need to tell the bus, you are the upper left lane, you are the upper right lane, you are the middle left lane, middle right lane. And you do that by hovering above the sensor system. So also really intuitive, quite a nice user experience to do so. We have the local software updates done currently here via USB stick. And uh, obviously this quality event registration. So we only inform the Nexty platform if something happens, if you're 100% sure that that is an event that has value for the business software. So we, we're um, encapsulating all the complexity of how to talk to this command rack, so to speak. And the last point that is really important here 
is the combination of inventory scans and inventory sinks. What does what that mean? And it gets really important. Uh, imagine if you have a, a power outage, and your rack is not supplied anymore, and it's, it's just a standard and dumb rack, and somebody is working with the rack and is putting and picking boxes. As soon as you power up the whole system, the physical inventory and the virtual inventory they would not be in sync anymore, right? So we need somehow a system that then looks for the boxes that I have on the lane and also asks the upper system how many boxes do you see on the lane and if that is not in sync we could signal with the stack light and the LED strip that something is wrong and somebody needs to check this. Okay, now we dive into that pattern recognition that really is the secret sauce here uh, of the whole system and to understand this, this uh, is a little graphic that makes it easier to understand. So this is one lane that we see from a side view here. You see two boxes on that lane and you see the, the green thing below the lane is our sensor bar. And where the, the background suppression sensors see something, they have a one. If they see nothing, there is a zero. And one physical put I do so you can better combine what we then later see and the animation. I just shortly do one, one put on the rack. So I would now test, I, I registered that uh, Kanban card before, so now the system also signals me in green where I should put this. And as soon as I put this on the correct lane, it signals in green that everything is fine. And now this movement that we've just seen, we will now see in the animation to also explain a little bit more in detail how the pattern recognition there works. So we now see the put of the box and everywhere where you see a one, we know that the box has been and if it slides down, we get this kind of pattern. So a, a time snapshot of this pattern. And out of the snapshot, we then need to calculate and understand, has that been somebody putting a box in there? Has that been somebody just without a purpose coming with an elbow or a hand hovering over the sensor? Has that been somebody taking a box out of the front? And this is really a lot of know-how that went into the software that we can clearly say we're pretty sure somebody put a box on the backside or was taking out a box from the backside. And that makes it then easy to register that events on the upper software layer. All right. Then, as promised, a little bit of the details of how the project went. So that, that started two years ago when Bosch approached us and said, we have those problems, can we solve them with an RFID system? Um, we saw that you have nice green sensors, um, perfect quality, so can't we just use them to do the movement detection and the identification of the system? And uh, we thought that could be somehow possible, but it's really tricky to do uh, localization and also movement detection with RFID. It is theoretically possible, but practically it's really hard. So, depending on the field that you get of your UHF reader, you would need to know is the box coming from the left or from the right. And most of the time you just use them to say, I see something or I see nothing. But that would only allow us to say how many boxes are in there, but not to say, has the box been coming from the beginning, so from the front side or from the back side. So we would miss some information that we would actually like to have. Another option would be putting RFID sensors to every lane, but that, as you can imagine, quickly gets quite expensive. So we thought further and uh, came up with the idea if we maybe can combine a sensor solution for identification and another sensor for a solution for the movement detection. And I found that really impressive, to be honest. So Pepper and Fuchs came just in four weeks up with this concept of a completely new sensor. It's a completely new housing and they put portfolio sensors in here. And there, uh, uh, Intrinsically, there are two portfolio sensors. That is one background suppression sensor that you can see here. It's more or less the same as in the bar. So just saying if there is something or is there nothing, and that would help us to signal if somebody puts a box that is the correct lane or it's the wrong lane. And then you have the sensor here in front. That's a VDM28, and this is a portfolio sensor to measure distance. And the idea has been if I put one of those sensors in the beginning of the rack, we would know the filling level right, of the rack. And you can imagine those had a really nice mounting, so they were attached uh, pretty much like this to the lane. You can also see the, the first LED prints here in the beginning, and then the two sensors that would enable us to say, okay, correct lane, wrong lane, or how, how f f full is the lane. The problems that we had then with this sensor was, first of all, it's quite difficult to touch them in the right angle, because they have to look, imagine the shelf gets really, really deep. 
So you have to be able to detect the first box, but also the last box. So the inclination where you place that sensor is really tricky. So you would need special experts to actually bring in those sensors, which we did not want. And the second problem that we had, even more problematic, was that boxes get usually stuck inside of the rack. So they slide a little bit, and then they get stuck. What means to us, we would detect that the lane is actually full, but it was not the case, so the box was just stuck. So we couldn't work with this concept either. And then the third iteration was, all right, is there another part of a portfolio sensor that we could use to do this movement detection? And if so, is there a different housing that we could use for this? And this is then where this sensor bar was born. You can see here, we have them in, in, in uh, different lengths, so depending on the shelf. And it has a lot of different optical sensors here right over the bar. So in a, different, uh, in, in a certain distance, they are inside of this uh, bar. And then, as you have seen in the software animation, that out of this pattern, we can then detect if something has been coming in or out. So really good hand-in-hand -hand work here with the engineers of the hardware. And that all obviously also needed to be uh, integrated into the Bosch world that then made sense out of this. And since this project really evolved over time, we then did even another iteration. So coming up with a software concept that uh, was uh, thinking or expecting that nobody is taking out boxes from the front side. And that also was at one point not true anymore, so there have been people taking boxes out from the front side. That was the next iteration. And uh, because the collaboration was so focused on being agile, that worked out pretty well. So really testing something out, getting early feedback from, uh, from, the, from the users there at the facility. We were also allowed to test it with the users and get early feedback. And then step by step, we came to the solution that we have now. And since the collaboration has been so successful, we were allowed to last year present also this innovation at the Inno pitch from Bosch. And uh, they liked it so much that we made the second place. This is a picture with two PNF colleagues that you also will see later in a networking lounge. So Ben and Sebastian. And then we all together presented this concept. And even further, because it was so nice, we made even the first place in the supply award last year for Bosch, Wilma Pebble, and Fox World. Now there comes the last part of the presentation where I would like to explain you a little bit where Neoception is trying to lift this whole concept through really the vision of where we think this could go in the future. And one of the problems that we then had when we started out integrating and testing this in different facilities at Bosch was the configuration of every shelf is usually a little bit different. So they have a little bit different uh, shelf depth, they have uh, different carriers, they have different IT inf uh, in, in integration, so infrastructure. So also if you want to monitor this not only in one facility, but in multiple facilities. And we quickly realized if we don't have somehow access to this configuration, we can't really help. We can't really monitor it. We can't really say what is implemented there. And also from, for, the, for the other side, so for the business software provider side, it was difficult to understand why do you need so many configurations? Because uh, as I explained, some of the software and hardware parts are quite difficult. So what we came up with was an idea. Can't we just encapsulate this complexity away so that a business software provider is just talking to what he's used to, talking to an API? So talking to a business integration level and saying, give me all recs, give me all carriers that you see, give me all lanes, I want all capacity without needing to cope with all this configuration stuff. And that was, would only be possible if we have a second layer in between of our shelves and the business software. But that, was also, uh, that would also be allowing then to integrate into different business software. Uh, so not only Nextseed, but also SAP that have been interested in this. Or we could even go so far and say, we build our own business application on top of our own API. And this API concept that covers uh, a few different things like a fleet management, permission management, monitoring, I will show you a little bit more in detail in a second. The second really important point about this is that we can integrate in different sensors, uh, sorry, um, business environments. And the third one would obviously be that we could build our own solution for small, medium enterprises with a business layer on top. Now on that, on that slide is, is similar to what we have seen before, but you can see that there is additional layer and that's exactly this shelf fleet management API that I have been talking about. So we ripped out some of the functionalities from the edge side and placed them in an above layer where it makes, makes much more sense, actually. So on that layer, you can then not only monitor one single device, but you would be able to monitor all of your devices, a so complete 
fleet management. You could also be making sure that every shelf receives the configuration it needs. And if you want to change something, you could quickly know what is the configuration it has. Should it be changed? Why should it be changed? Is there some changes in the IT environment infrastructure? And that would also be one point that would be a, of, of huge benefit for our customers, so for, for business software providers in that case. Um, another thing, as I explained before, you have the real-time inventory, so all the things that come along a little bit what we currently have on one uh, shelf level, you would then have on a multiple shelf level. And uh, one further point that I would like to point out here is the so-called Kanban storage allocation. That's a concept that we thought could be really of interest if we combine this with visual text on the shelf itself. What currently happens is if somebody wants to install and um, configure their own Kanban processes, they would need to approach their shelves and then physically say, I want this uh, Kanban control cycle on that lane, I want this Kanban control cycle on that lane, and, and so on. But if you have to do this for all of your shelves, that's quite a lot of time. And uh, sometimes people, they don't really care about where that is exactly placed in the rack. They just want to make sure that they have enough capacity of a certain material so that the production is rolling and ongoing. So we thought, why can't we come up with a clever algorithm that allows for um, allocation of capacities for Kanban control IDs? So you would just say to the system, I need that amount of Kanban IDs always to be stored in front of your production line in, in, in your production uh, supply area. I don't really care about where you place them, but I have a, a few information available. It's, for example, how heavy are they, how frequently are they used. And then our clever algorithm would say, all right, I place them in the middle because they're frequently used or they're quite heavy, so I'd rather place them on a height where it's easy to, to lift them up. So that, that's one of the ideas that we had also for this uh, API. Okay. Now back to the presentation and a little bit deep dive into what kind of software we use here. That would be on the edge side, as I explained, the device management. Most of the gateways that we currently use are really highly secure. So they, are, they, they run an own operation system uh, based on Elbe that we built. Um, well, in our own engineering know-how, we, we built this uh, Elbe Debian based operation system. Uh, everything runs on ARM and every application software that runs is usually dockerized, which enables us to include this in a so-called CI-CD pipeline. That means continuous integration. If some updates are done, we could instantly update also the, the parts on, on the edge. Then on the right side, you see the cloud infrastructure environment. Uh, most of them are modern and pretty much standard technologies like an MQTT broker, so most of the stuff that goes from the edge to the cloud is done via MQTT. Then we have our, all of our services also for monitoring, running on Kubernetes, uh, same accounts for uh, the APIs that are running in, in, in this Kubernetes cluster. Um, we have Postgres as DBs, we use Loki and Prometheus for monitoring and logging. And then depends a little bit on the use case. You could also uh, directly connect to a Kafka stream if you want all raw data events of your RFID system. And then on the bottom line, you can see a little bit more about the general uh, tech stack. So everything that we build is usually um, uh, on repos on GitLab. And we use Pulumi for cloud infrastructure as a code. So everything is really reproducible. If another customer comes and says, I would like to have this in my own uh, hybrid cloud environment, that could be possible. And same accounts for uh, the flux automation. That's one of my favorite slides, actually, because it, it shows my uh, living room. And uh, the idea behind, uh, there are two ideas behind showing this picture. One was we have been really putting a lot of thoughts in how we could build up a nice concept for HMI Fair, and then COVID hit us. So we were not able to present what we wanted to present. We had to shrink down everything that was planned, because imagine the big shelf here in the background in my office wouldn't work. So we also shrinked the rack down to the small size that you can see on the left side. And uh, this, so we, we did really uh, keep on working, even though it was tough times. And then we were even more happy if the opportunity arose that we could present all of this stuff here at the Papa Fox Online Summit. And the second really important point here is that we focused all of the time on the sync part. So really just talking about the rec, what we did not focus on so far was the source. But if we talk about complete digitalization, we have to cope with both source and sync, right? So the sync would be the left, and the source would be the right RFID reader. In that case, pretty easy digitalization, but it comes along with this nice UI, and that's an important concept to understand before we jump into the video. And 
the name of this, we currently have uh, placed as workstation, but this workstation just signals uh, refill a certain amount of numbers of parts or could be external triggering. So um, if you remember the picture from the beginning, the sources could be different, right? So depending on the kind of source, we could be triggering different work orders here. And now we jump into the video that comes right fresh out of the oven. Uh, thanks a lot to Vincent and Kevin who made this work that we could even do this uh, so, so quickly. And it shows now from the hardware component parts a little bit what you know already from the system behind me. Uh, you can see the LED strips attached. You can see the main controller and the stack light. And this is the workstation I have been talking about. So really a station where you have your tablet UI saying please refill a certain material um, and it would also allow, and that's a little bit of a business integration that we came up with, so using our own API to allow for uh, the management of common control cycles, management of supply areas that could be either for small medium-sized companies done with our software or these informations come for, from integrations uh, to ERP systems or to the next seed platform. And then this will be an overview of all the control cycles. You can see me again now working with the workstation. This is all cloud software, so as soon as you scan a tag, actually this RFID event would be instantly available in the cloud. You could do whatever you want to do with it, and we currently do this workstation part with it, and as soon as you confirm on your tablet that you have done this work task, instantly the status of this command ID changes from empty to filled in transport. As soon as you've done all your work tasks, I would now play again the milk runner, so going with my shelf towards, uh, sorry, with my milk run towards the shelf. And now this process is what you've already seen. Um, I explain a little bit about where certain common control cycles are placed. So that's the manual process that I explained before that could be automated by just saying, I want five of this somewhere in the shelf. You place them, I don't care where. And you can see that we also have the digital twins. So how many boxes are on what lane? The normal process, I scan something, the LED signals, please put this here, and I get the feedback, I was putting this right. If I put it wrong, as seen on the shelf here as well, it would blink in red, so I have to scan it so I know where it is. It would also blink red if I put it on the wrong lane. And this is a nice shot because now we also hover along this sensor bar and you can see the optical suppression sensors blinking. So this is really the signal that we get back and then interpret to what is gonna happen. And as soon as we have all the uh, Kanban IDs from filled and transport towards uh, filled and production, you can see me taking things out. And as soon as I take things out, they would instantly switch from filled and production to empty. That happens then for all of the processes. And also as seen in the Bosch video, what you could do is um, do a residual. I use one of them and I put only the, the one RFID reader in that case back to the shelf. You combine this uh, with tablets if you like. And uh, one interesting part here is I could also use, instead of using the trigger of I take out a box, what I could also use as a replenishment trigger is I put back the empty box on an empty lane and then trigger, please, I've used this, so refill it. Now you can see me taking out things again. And if you repeat this cycle over time, uh, what happens is that we can ca calculate cycle times based on this, right? Because at every point in the Kanban cycle, we know what happened and when it happened. And this really helps to improve your business processes because you know the medium, how long material usually stays inside of your cycle. And if it's different from the medium, you could even signal alarm. And that is again now the workstation. And if new items are coming in, you would instantly see I have to replace something. The video goes on a little bit and also shows how we integrate this into this API layer, but I've been talking about this already and I think uh, now we can switch to the last animation of my today's talk, which is the concept of where to head with this if we would digitalize the complete shop floor. So really starting with incoming goods and having an RFID reader here. Then doing the same as explained with the workstation. So I would rearrange or repackage stuff and label them, have the information available. I would integrate the Kanban process in this complete digitalization. I have another workstation part. I have another uh, rack on the left that you can see. And at the end of your procedure, you would repackage everything. You would 
um, for example, label them again with another RFID tag, so you only have to read one to know how many uh, marks or whatever you produce are in there. The concept of the gateway that aggregates all of this data. And then you would see the different layers. So the perception layer with all the sensor on the shop floor, you would have the integration and enrichment layer in the middle, and then the possible integration parts into Bosch NextSeed, into SAP Leonardo, or other warehouse management parts. That's it from my side. I hope it was informative. I hope it was also a little bit uh, entertaining. And I hand over to Ollie if there are some questions. Thanks, Tobias. Well, unfortunately, we don't have the time uh, for any questions, but um, you made a great presentation, and I think there are uh, not really many questions about your presentation. But if there are some, don't hesitate to join our uh, networking launch that starts in almost exactly 15 minutes. And as you said, we'll have um, several experts on stage uh, from Pebble and Fuchs, Neoception, and from Bosch, of course, and we're talking about that collaboration. And then you only have to change the room, so go into a new room for this networking lounge, uh, just click on to conference and then you're in and the networking lounge starts at 4 p.m. German time. So see you in 15 minutes and thanks again, Tobias. Great job. See you later. Thanks.